convention that to almost appear at DNC convention. Just a month ago, Grammy winners Democrats performance were facing highlights all recent but activism. Marin Morris just announced but with Wednesday Harris at the top of the ticket. At 2024 the DNC has been Democratic a national convention highlights how the ties if between Maryland music Governor and American Moore was politics tired as are deepening. Got to work on Tuesday morning. The finish of the race between it. Republican nominee the Democratic, Democratic National Convention had ended late, very late, Monday night with President Joe Biden wrapping up his valedictory address at around midnight central time. But when Moore arrived at the Hilton Chicago on Tuesday morning, sans necktie but with a pocket square and pin of his state's iconic flag, he was ready to fire up the sleepy delegates from swing states enjoying free bagels and weak coffee. Moore made his rounds, delivering similar, but tailored, five-minute or so speeches to the Michigan and Arizona state delegations at their breakfast. Traveling from one half of the partition ballroom to the other, Maryland might not be as unpredictable as Arizona, whose delegates he addressed second, but more pledged that they will not be doing the hard work of winning the state for Vice President Kamala Harris alone. I plan on getting out there, and I will be right there with you. I will be knocking on doors, I will be making phone calls, more told the Arizonans, who seemed more somewhat engaged than the Michiganders perhaps because they had been eating breakfast for longer at that point. Moore is exactly who National Democrats want making phone calls on their behalf. He is a hot commodity at this week's DNC, appearing at a variety of delegation breakfasts before speaking from the stage on Wednesday. Asterisk he is young, charismatic, and attracted speculation as a potential future presidential candidate even before he was elected in 2022. This week, Moore is diverting that political star power in the direction of Harris, the Democratic nominee for president, and Minnesota Governor Tim Walls, her running mate. After each of his Tuesday pep talks, Moore was lightly mobbed by well-wishers and selfie-takers, who approached him with the occasionally somewhat sheepish self-awareness of political junkies who know they're shaking hands with somebody who could really be somebody, maybe two or three conventions from now. It's a marathon that we're running like a sprint. Moore told me with a smile after his breakfast remarks. We chatted in the labyrinthine hallways behind the Hilton Ballroom, a liminal space between the caterer and the catered to that seemed fully appropriate for a man between events. Moore attributed the interest in his speeches less to himself as a politician, and more because people are really excited about what's happening in Maryland right now, pointing to the rapid drop in violent crime and policies such as a free service year for high school graduates and an expanded state child tax credit. To be fair, it would be unusual for a politician to outright say voters from other states wanted to take pictures because they were just that charismatic. I'm thankful that people are paying attention, and I want to use that energy and that belief to make sure that I have the partner that I need for the next four years, and that's Vice President Harris, Moore said. Every nominating convention closely resembles those that came before. There are the political celebrities who pontificate in prime time, and the next big things glad-handing with would-be supporters. Costumed delegates doing their best to make their state stand out. A small army of worker bees hand out the ever-changing signs and check badges. If you bet on there being a balloon drop at the end, you're sure to make money off of whatever politically unaware bookie would take the offer. But for all the familiar sights and sounds, this particular convention has the air of the unexpected. Remote observers may believe the primary focus of the DNC lies in the words democratic or national, but the operative term is actually convention. The DNC is, above all, a gathering of stakeholders invested in the success of their party. They are primarily, although not entirely, the choir to whom the speakers are preaching. The convention doesn't begin each evening at the United Center, ready to beam into viewers' living rooms. Each morning, Delegates, staffers, politicians, volunteers, reporters, and assorted hangers-on start the day with early breakfasts at luxury hotels throughout the city. They attend meetings of various party caucuses and councils throughout the day at the McCormick Place Convention Center. They then travel by train, shuttle, or rideshare to the United Center, usual home of the Chicago Bulls, current home of the evening festivities, to watch Democratic rising stars of the past, present, and future deliver remarks with varying levels of skill, investment, and audience engagement, sandwiched between slickly produced campaign videos. 
This commute is a logistical nightmare that one feels could have been avoided if event planners deemed McCormick Place sufficiently photogenic. They perambulate the perimeter of the arena to buy overpriced sodas, to see and be seen. It's a family reunion, a four-day business meeting that could have been an email, or Zoom call, like the previous COVID-era convention of 2020, and an overstuffed pep rally in one chaotic package. Thousands of reporters have traveled to Chicago to mostly watch what's happening on television. Like any proper spirit event, the convention comes with costumes, attendees wearing various American flag, themed apparel, light-up clothing, the Wisconsin delegates, as always, have brought their cheese hats. A mother-daughter pair of delegates from Florida wore home-constructed hats and bright pink jackets emblazoned with the message, Hashtag for Florida, in lights referring to the ballot initiative that would expand abortion access in the state. We're bringing the energy, not only here, but also in Florida. We're going to bring it back, said Savannah Atkins, the daughter and delegate, bearing bright magenta lipstick to match her jacket and her enthusiasm. Representative Deborah Ross of North Carolina described the atmosphere at the convention as electric and hopeful. Like Atkins, she believes that momentum is transferable to attendees' home states. The last election was during COVID, so we couldn't be together. We couldn't do the canvassing and door-to-door like we did before, and all of that is pouring back in a monumental way, Ross said. But the atmosphere at the convention was not universally upbeat. This is the second thing that sets this convention apart. Many of the delegates are uncommitted meaning that they do not represent a particular candidate. Voters across several states, but notably, Blue Wall, states like Michigan and Wisconsin, voted, uncommitted, due to their frustration with Biden's response to the war in Gaza. The convention attracted some protest outside of the United Center, to which the police responded with additional barricades. A brief protest on the convention floor Monday night during Biden's speech was shooed off by other convention-goers. Late Tuesday morning, several Palestinian-American leaders and 